everybody Mike here with everything about concrete.com now this video is about installing a garage slab and this is an addition to an already garage slab that's there that we did years ago so if you like this kind of stuff if you like concrete if you like learning how to install garage slabs then this is the video you're going to want to watch now this is a part one of a part three series so this video will be about the forming and the prep and then the next video will be about pouring the slab and then the, the last one the third one will be about power trialing and finishing the slab so make sure you check them out too so what we're doing right now is we're laying out the forms this slab is going to be 24 feet by 20 feet and uh, it's 24 feet out away from that existing garage and it's 20 feet wide we're going to get our forms laid out it's a haunched slab so the edges are going to be 12 inches thick and the middle will be six inches thick so we're going to be using you know, two by 12s around the outside to get this thing formed up we're going to get these forms screwed together so we'll we'll get the forms lined up then we'll put our we call our scab form over the seam and we'll get that all screwed together we like screwing things with uh deck screws instead of nailing them together it's just easier to it's easier and tighter to put the forms together and it's a lot easier to strip them too. And then you can use the screws over and over again. What I'm doing is I'm over there looking at that plywood they put down the side of the garage and when they put that plywood on, they ran it down over the edge of the existing slab. So we're gonna match the same height as that existing garage slab. So I got to cut that plywood up about an inch and a half so we can see the top of that other slab. So we're going to staple up that tie bar and then I'm going to measure up, snap a chalk line on that plywood and just cut a strip of it off there. That way when we go to pour the slab we can make sure we're exactly at the same height as that other garage slab. Now I don't do the gravel prep here guys. Uh, the homeowner hires the excavator. And then the excavator comes in and, you know, he just preps the gravel for us. So when we show up, it is what it is. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not so good. This one was okay. It was, uh, it was pretty level. It was shaped pretty good. You know, the haunches are all dug out for us. So uh, that's, that's a bonus. Sometimes we'll show up and it's not very good. And then, you know, we get to deal with that mess. So this... This slab is going to be two feet in, so it's going to be two feet in from the edge of the other garage slab. So it's not going to be quite as wide as that of the garage. The other garage is 24 feet wide. This one's going to be 20. So as you can see, I'm just cutting that, that edge off. And Darren and Luca establishing where that board's going to go in from that edge. And then they'll pin that right there to hold that board. And then we'll measure out our 24 feet. Get that form screwed up. And then they'll do the same on the other edge. They'll measure in two feet to the pin. Luke's measuring out 24 feet right there. Mark on the board. And you can get that corner screwed together. Getting the rest of that plywood sawed. The girls are trying to rip that pieces off. So we can see, now we can see the sill plate and the top of the slab over there. That'll be our finished grade. So Luke getting that corner pinned in there. Once we get that pinned where it needs to go, get that last corner screwed together, then we can get this thing square. So if you guys if you guys don't know me, you know my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors. We specialize in slabs and floors and all kinds of concrete flat work. We do a lot of decorative concrete, stamping, staining. We do a lot of concrete repair. We even do epoxy floors. So that's that's what this channel is all about. 
So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. Hit the little bell notification too. So what we're doing is now we're squaring it. So we got our two corners up by the garage where they need to go. Now we're going to measure diagonally corner to corner and make sure we get the exact same measurement. And if we don't, then we'll just slide that. And what Darren's doing right now is he's sliding that back a little bit to where he needs it. And then we'll double check. We'll go we'll keep going back and forth diagonally until we get the exact same measurement. That's the simple way to just to square a slab like this. And we do that, we do that same method when we, we have a regular concrete slab when we're not adding it to another one. Just go diagonally and get your diagonals exactly the same and you'll be perfectly square. Sometimes it takes three or four times to get it perfect. You know, we like making sure it's perfect so when the guys go to build, they're building on a perfectly square slab. You see Darren's tweaking that just a little bit more. You can figure out that your diagonals too with a calculation, you know, just you could Google it too if you wanted to, but I mean, it's just as simple just to go diagonal. You can get it close by eye, right? So if you're two inches off, let's say you're two inches off and you check your diagonals and you know you got to move one side an inch one way or the other, you get it right. So it's not very hard to do. It just takes a minute or two. So they'll check that four or five times, make sure it's perfect, and when they get it perfect, you can see Luke over there now. He's putting a pin in, driving in that metal stake, make sure that corner doesn't move. Then we can run our string. So Abby's running the string on the top of the board. Once we get our strings run, then we can use that string line to straighten the board and finish putting our pins in. We like running our strings right on the center of the board too. It's just, just the way we like. You could run it on the inside if you want. You could run it on the outside of the board. You run ours right in the center. Darren's putting another pin in that corner. We put two pins on each corner and then we, we drive our pins in every oh, four feet or so when we use two by twelves like this. Getting one in the center of that board, get that center right where it needs to go. So this garage slab, like I said, it's going to be six inches thick in the middle and 12 inches thick around the edges. This is what we call a haunched slab, or some people call it an Alaskan slab. But in Maine, where we live, we could just call it a haunch slab. What do you guys call these things? Let me know down in the comments. Um, I'm sure there's different terminology depending on where you live in, in the States or in, in a different country, but for us, it's just a haunch slab. And most of them are six inches thick like this with, with 12 on the edges. Sometimes we got to go 18 inches thick on the edges, depending on what town we're in and what the code enforcement officer wants us to do. But most of them are only 12 inches like this. If you get a good gravel base, you know, if it's compacted really good, it's this is plenty strong enough for definitely for residential work. Once we get our pins all put in, now we can establish grades. So we got the laser set up. I like using that Topcon RL 5B laser. That's a that's a really good self-leveling laser. You guys want to check that out, that'll be down in the description below. Um, it just makes setting grades really, really easy and fast. So we're setting the receiver on our grade stick to the same height as that other concrete slab. And then, you know, one guy will hold the grade stick. The other guy goes around and screws the top of the forms right to grade. I got a concrete slab course to it. I got a full course on how to install your own concrete slab down in the description. And I really break it down for you, all the steps from all the forming, pouring, 
there's even you know finishing in there i got i got a lesson on power troweling so it teaches you how to power trowel so i mean if you're ever thinking of installing your own concrete slab or if you're thinking about getting in the business the concrete business then that slab course down there is definitely a good place to start we'll get our corners all set to grade and then we'll come back and we do the middles lift that up the grade get it screwed where it needs to go and that's basically how simple setting grade is to this like i said that laser makes it really really easy receiver will beep it'll beep fast if the board needs to go down it'll beep slow if the board needs to go up and then it has a solid beep you when you get right to where you need to be that evens off with the grade on the on the laser what we're doing now is we're putting down two inch styrofoam insulation that's what the guy had under that other slab that other garage slab in the house in the background you can see his house back there too we did that slab for him a few years ago you put radiant heat tubing in the house but this garage won't have radiant heat tube. It'll just have this two inch styrofoam. That's code. That's, you know, the building code for a lot of towns in Maine. They require two inch styrofoam under any slab like this. That styrofoam is expensive. It's like 38 bucks a sheet. So it really adds to the expense of a garage slab. But if it's if it's the code, if it's the code for that town, then you got to do it. Is it necessary? You know, probably in most cases, it's probably not necessary. It does help, you know, it does help keep the floor a little warmer. So if you have heat in the garage, then it's going to be a little bit easier to heat the garage. Um, it does, if your garage isn't heated, if it's, uh, and it gets cold in the winter, that styrofoam is going to help keep the frost from getting down. Under the under the concrete slab and heaving the slab, so it's definitely good in that essence. But it does add quite a bit to the expense. We're putting wire mesh in this. I'm going to end up using a 3,500 psi mix when we pour this, and I'll put fiber mesh reinforcement in the mix, so it'll have both wire and fiber mesh for reinforcement. This is a light gauge wire mesh I'm putting in here. Those are five foot by ten foot sheets. They're about seven bucks a sheet. So I mean it's not it's not real expensive. I think there was about twelve sheets or so in this. And then we're also going to put a double row of rebar around that outside edge. And that'll just help strengthen and beef up the edge a little bit. So those those full sheets those are four foot by eight foot sheets of styrofoam were easy to lay and then i had to cut the strips for the edge because the edge was papered a little bit you can see luke we're going to lay the rebar just on the outside edge and we'll wet set those when we pour the slab to make sure that they're only a few inches down from the surface we could tie them to the wire and have them all put in there already but sometimes they just end up a little bit more towards the bottom that way we like them we like that rebar about two or three inches from the surface for the slab so we'll just wet set them and set them in there and what Darren's doing is he's drilling holes into that other slab so we're going to drill and pin these two slabs together so they don't move and that that seam stays nice and tight I'm assuming they're probably going to cut a doorway through from one of these garages to the other. So, you know, we don't want that seam where the door is opening up. We don't want one slab settling or lifting higher than the other slab. So we're going to drill and pin these together. So he's drilling holes. Uh, he's using our Bosch hammer drill. If you've seen some of my other videos, you've seen us use that. That's a real good hammer drill. The drilling in the concrete. I think I have that link down in the description too. And then we're going to just pound in some rebar. They're probably 16 inches long. 
So they'll go into that other slab about four inches. And those pieces of rebar will just pin the two slabs together. Luke's putting on some bracing. Uh, we'll put on whatever we have with us today. And then the day we show up to pour, we'll finish putting some more bracing on. But those, we call those kickers. What do you guys call those things? We call them kickers. Um, and that just helps keep the boards nice and straight. There's a lot of pressure up against that 2x12 when you pour concrete in there that thick. So you got to keep it braced. Just driving the pins in itself won't be enough. So we put on usually kickers every four or five feet. You see we're driving in those pins now. now. The last thing I do is I so I, I check my grade on top of the form. Then after I get my styrofoam in, I'm double checking the thickness to make sure I'm six inches. I want to know the average thickness. So when I go to order the concrete, I know how much concrete to order. So I'll go around, I'll check a few spots. This one was right on six inches, just about everywhere. So it was graded nice and level. So I'll know just how much concrete to order. Well, that's it, guys. That's how you form a garage slab addition. You know, stick around for part two. You'll be able to see us pour this thing. And I'll see you on the next video.